ambient here deals with how the ambient light affects this layer. So right now I don't have an ambient light on, but I created one for this uh, parameter here. So I'm going to turn it on. And as you see, it's going to blow out that layer. It's going to make it really bright. Now, maybe I don't want the ambient layer or ambient light to affect that layer as much, but I wanted to stay on the back background layer how much it is. I can take down this ambient on this layer itself, and I could take it off if I want completely, or I can reduce the amount that it affects it. So that's how this uh, parameter for ambient works. Now I'm going to turn that off. And if I try to move around the slider when there's no ambient light on, it does nothing. So it only works when there's ambient there. Now, when you have a layer, it has both diffuse lighting and specular lighting. And these both combined together help illuminate the layer. So if I turn this to zero, the specular intensity will still help illuminate the layer. If I turn that to both of them to zero, it's not going to be illuminated at all. And um, diffuse is mainly how much um, light is allowed in from the light, obviously. And if I turn that to, to zero and I turn the specular intensity, specular is the hot spots or almost like the uh, reflections. So that's what specular uh, intensity looks like at 100%. And you want to use like a combination of these to get um, a look that you're really looking at. So 50 and 50 is their default setting. And you can mess with them individually to get uh, some cool looking uh, lighting effects and to uh, fine tune it the way you want to. The specular shininess deals with the uh, specular intensity here, and it's mainly used for, I mean, when things are metallic. So when you have something that's like shiny, like metal, it's going to have a uh, smaller uh, hot spot for this uh, specular intensity. So I'm going to turn this intensity all the way up to 100 so we can demonstrate this. And here is the hot spot that's going on on our image here. Now, that seems like it may be a little too big, but we want the specular intensity to still be at 100. The specular shininess um, increases or decreases the, the fall off of this hot spot here. So if I increase this, now we have the hotspot being decreased and put more into condensed more into a condensed area. I'm gonna set this back down to five percent to keep it where it was before. Now metal here doesn't have to do exactly with the object looking metal like you may think. It actually decides if the uh, color of the specular intensity there comes from the layer if it's at 100% or from the light if it's at 0%. So if I put this down to 0, you can see that the uh, specular lighting is going to come from the light and the light that we have is a completely white light. So if I change the color of this light, now the lighting and the metal uh, that we got that we turned down to zero is going to be the color of the light. Let me change it to a different color to probably uh, illustrate this a little better. Not the same color of the what I had. So there we go. Now, whoops. Now if I come down into here and change it to a hundred again, now the uh, specular lighting is going to come from the object the color of the object. So those are the um, all the material options covered in depth here and how to use them and 
just uh, mess around to get the uh, lighting options that you that you like and uh, when you're working with your client and you twirl down into the material options and you start messing with this stuff they're gonna be impressed because a lot of people don't use these and it's a, a mistake that those people make by just uh, accepting that the lights only properties can come from the light itself so use those uh, properties to your advantage to get ahead in uh, in whatever you're doing so you can be ahead of all the other people that you're working with so I thanks thank you for uh, watching the tutorial and have a good one everybody thanks for watching again